Cambridge Analytica has been in the news for the first time ever. Of course, it's a British research firm, and it's now being accorded the technical prowess of a Bond villain. According to the Washington Post, the New York Times, and all the other hyenas, Cambridge Analytica apparently is able to swing an election with some Facebook data and a few million bucks. Did that happen? No, it didn't. But even if it's absurd to think a small data company could have changed the 2016 presidential election, it doesn't mean that bigger tech companies couldn't do that in the future. Dr. Robert Epstein is a senior research psychologist for the American Institute for Behavioral Research and Technology. He's looked into this carefully and has found some interesting potential facts about it. Dr. Epstein joins us tonight. Doctor, I don't want to make anybody, uh, any of our viewers paranoid, but we talk a lot about the potential effect of big tech on how we live and on, on our democracy. You've looked into what Google and Facebook could do in an election. Tell us what you found. Well, Tucker, I've been studying this very carefully uh, now for more than five years with um, multiple uh, randomized controlled experiments around the world for national elections. And I can tell you that we should be paranoid because what Google and Facebook can do is really uh, mind-boggling. Uh, if, for example, if uh, Mark Zuckerberg on election day last year, if he had chosen to press the enter key early morning and just sent out a, a message to uh, Hillary Clinton supporters only saying go out and vote, a go out and vote reminder, that would have sent her an additional 450,000 voters that day with no one knowing that this had occurred. Uh, and that's just Facebook. What Google can do is really off the scale. Our experiments show that Google can, uh, can take a 50-50 split among undecided voters uh, and change it into a 90-10 split with no one knowing that they have been manipulated and without leaving a paper trail for authorities to follow. How? How could Google do that? Well, this is work that uh, we're about to break. This is news that's about to break about our newest research, so I can't really go into detail, but it has to do with those search suggestions. Literally, from the very first character that you type into the search bar, you are being manipulated. And we've done 16 months of experiments. We have all the details now. We know exactly how this works. Uh, so they've got the search suggestions, which people are just oblivious to. And then, of course, the search results down below. Uh, we know from our uh, five years of work on search results uh, that uh, just by putting those in a certain order, which people really can't see, uh, just by favoring one candidate over another in search results, uh, that can easily produce shifts uh, among undecided voters of 20 percent or more, up to 80 percent in some demographic groups, again, with no one aware that this is occurring. I mean, my jaw is open. I mean, I, I've thought about this stuff a lot, and even I am shocked by this. By the way, our Congress is spending its time funding yak herding in Tibet. I mean, in 10 seconds, do you think that the threat is profound enough to warrant intervention by lawmakers? The threat is absolutely, positively profound. If you could look at the numbers that I look at now every day, if any of our Congress uh, people could look at these numbers, they would be stunned and they would take action, I guarantee it. Well, I hope that video of this conversation goes everywhere on Facebook and Google. Uh, yes, Dr. Epstein, thank you. That was amazing. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, Tucker.